Welcome to the Siebel CRM Update 22.5 Highlights Presentation. My name is Alexander Hansal. I'm happy that you can join me for this quick update on 22.5. According to the various documents that Oracle provides with the 22.5 updates, we have to welcome the following new features. Data visualization components are included in the repository upgrade. Migration application receives a series of enhancements, such as the ability to abort running executions or clean up the history. And we have an update to the industry REST API area, where there's a new industry REST API documented for pricing administration. There are lots of information about these features in Bookshelf, along with the information that the activation of tasks for task UI after full and incremental migration is now required to be made manually. And we have other news related to Siebel, not directly to 22.5, as the statement of direction document got updated in April. And also we have seen the availability of Siebel Cloud Manager in late April 22. So let's talk about these things as well in the following few minutes. Data visualization components or dashboards as Oracle calls it are new in 22.5. This is an exciting new category of applets. Um, the screenshot that you can see is a view a dashboard view, which is made up primarily of the new type of applets, such as infolets, which can display one or more fields, including aggregations or list of records in a yeah, tile style that consumes only a minimum amount of space. Then there are hierarchy applets, which are basically three applets on steroids, if you will, and they show four levels of hierarchical data, such as in the example here, the contact, all the households that the contact is in, and for each contact in the household, the list of opportunities or other related entities. And then we have the timeline applet, which displays different entities from newest to oldest. So it's sorted by a date field and it displays a, an icon for to, to identify the entity and a descriptive text. And uh, timeline is very interesting because uh, when you customize it, you can decide which entities such as activities, opportunities, service requests, orders and whatnot you want to be part of the timeline or not. And the user can filter these entities, the, can, the user can filter the dates, the date range, and there is an ability to place additional buttons such as an add button for to add, well, uh, another entity such as add an activity or add a service request. Uh, all these data visualization applets are configured through the repository. So this is a no-code solution. And Oracle provides us with new classes, user properties, and specialized web templates for both the applets and views. And along with these go new physical renderers, PRs, and presentation models, PMs. So it's a full package. And Oracle has not stopped there. Oracle has created three sample dashboard views in different applications. So they, ha they have placed them in different applications, such as the financial services contact dashboard view, an example of which you see in the screenshot, which is in financial services. It's, it's, it's a detailed view for a contact. Then there is high-tech industrial manufacturing or HTIM, which has a entirely new dashboard and e-communication 
has a dashboard called TOUI dashboard UI view. So these are the re repository view names if you want to look for them. It's also fully documented in Siebel Bookshelf in 22.5 and higher and supports, of course, customization through cloning these applets provided by Oracle, creating your own applets, creating your own views and applying, not stopping at the repository, custom JavaScript and custom CSS to make your dashboard really stand out. Let's take a look at the migration application, which has also received a significant update with 22.5. So the ability to abort or stop a running migration plan execution is now included. Basically, once you start a migration plan execution from the user interface, you have pressed the action button. The action button goes and changes to a stop button. So you can manually stop uh, that. Uh, there's also a REST API for that, but more on that later. Uh, also, there is the famous refresh button for individual steps and clicking one of these buttons now refreshes all the steps. So you don't have to consecutively clickety-click all the uh, dozens of steps to see if it's still running or not. The history list has gotten an update as well as it now sports a query and a delete button so you can do a query that's a first in the migration application on the history records and you can delete one or more selected history records now this not only deletes the database records but also attempts to delete the file system artifacts, so the log files and data export and zip files associated with the execution. And along these lines, there's also an automated cleanup of hung migration plans, if you will. So when there's a situation that a migration does not complete successfully, it, it might be still in a running state. And now with 22.5 and higher, if you restart the Tomcat that hosts a migration application, typically your AI Tomcat, then it looks for hung tasks and sets them to an error state, puts them in the history, so you can start fresh uh, with a new execution of a migration plan. And as we already mentioned, the migration REST API has been extended to support these operations, so stop execution plans or delete history. Um, in, so it's included in the REST API, so you can make your REST calls if you use orchestration layers on top of the migration application. And the other area of innovation with 22.5 is the inbound REST API. So nothing new here with tech technicalities related to data service or workflow API introduced in 22.3, but a new industry REST API has made it into the product. And that is related to DX4C, the Digital Experience for Communications product, actually a sub area of that, LaunchX. And to support the LaunchX product um, with in implementing a common product catalog to be used across cloud or on-premises applications, Siebel now exposes a industry REST API for pricing administration. So this includes uh, new or enhanced existing resources for the data API, that is business object API, for example, attribute adjustments, discount matrices, uh, aggregate discounts, contract schedule, conditional charge plans, and the like. Uh, the bookshelf also informs us there's a new workflow to uh, get product promotion details by query by example. And for example, pricing administration changes in Siebel often require the uh, clearing of several caches, and that can leverage, it's described in bookshelf as well, the pre- and post-processing feature that was actually introduced one release ago in 22.4. 
In other news, um, Oracle has published on Oracle support an updated document for the Siebel CRM statement of direction. So the Siebel CRM statement of direction document is published every year and provides an overview of features and enhancements that are planned for delivery, planned for delivery in upcoming monthly updates over a two-year period. So that's what it says in the current statement of direction. And this is starting from January 22. So some of the features described as planned in the statement of directions are already delivered in 22.1 to 22.5. Um, you see the document ID, where if you have access to Oracle support, you can access the document there. And there's also a link to an article on the Siebel Hub, which gives you a summary of Oracle's plans for the next two years with Siebel CRM. Mind you that these are only plans and make sure you understand that. Uh, the link is also in the description of this video. Another addition to the Oracle Siebel CRM portfolio, if you will, is has been made available in late April 22. So a bit too late for the last update that we have made, the last update video. Uh, Siebel Cloud Manager or SCM is now available to interested parties. And what are the use cases for SCM? So it's a utility that exists as an instance on Oracle Cloud. And using that instance, you can do basically three things. So you can migrate existing on-premises or cloud environments, classic Siebel deployments, if you will, uh, using a Siebel lift utility, collect all the artifacts of that environment and push it into Oracle Cloud Infrastructure's object storage or OOS. And then Siebel Cloud Manager will deploy that information and artifacts into a new architecture, if you will, Siebel in classic form, AI, gateway, Siebel server, database, etc. But the Siebel components are now managed as a Kubernetes cluster. And the information about the enterprise configuration is Helm chart YAML files in a GitLab instance. So that is quite exciting. Uh, the Lyft utility is, of course, optional if you want to migrate existing environments to that new architecture, then you can use it. But Siebel Cloud Manager is also capable of doing greenfield deployments of a sample Siebel environment using the Siebel sample database or an empty or vanilla database, as we call it, in the same Kubernetes managed uh, architecture. And the third thing you can do with Siebel Cloud Manager is ongoing maintenance of enterprises that have been deployed using Siebel Cloud Manager before by modifying the Helm chart YAML files in GitLab. And there's an automated process that will push the changes to the Kubernetes cluster. So for example, you add new components or parameters to the servers. You now do it editing YAML files and uh, committing your changes into Git. The instances that are created are only available on an OCI tenancy. So that's one requirement. Uh, you must have an OCI tenancy. And also, if you want to use the Siebel Lift utility, the Siebel source environment has to be on 18.12 or higher. Then, of course, it's required to set up GitLab in OCI or has to be reachable from the Cloud Manager instance. And the target architecture uses Oracle Autonomous Database ATP, formerly known as Oracle Autonomous Database for Transaction Processing, and that lives exclusively on OCI. 
the documentation is currently at the time of recording available on Oracle support using the support ID displayed on your screens. So um, 22.5 is a significant update and there's a lot of news about Siebel CRM as we go into uh, 2022, into, into summer. Uh, how do you update to 22.5? So if you follow the videos that we publish about Siebel updates, every monthly update has a quick summary how to update. And the good news here is with 22.5, the process really has not changed. So let's do it briefly. Here is the diagram that tells us how to update a development or DR environment. So your first step will always be take a complete backup of your environment, that is your servers and also the database. Make sure you have that safe before you run the MDE, the modular deployment engine, which installs the binaries. And if you do not skip it, uh, also automatically executes the mandatory post-install database update utility, which alters your database. It adds schema, manifest, uh, and uh, seed data information to your database. So you have to run post-install database update once per environment and only if that's complete, you can consider, do you want to do a repository upgrade? So it's 22.5 and you're really keen on, well, working with those infolets and dashboards, then a repository upgrade becomes required. So you run it and that in imports an integration workspace into your repository, which you have to, well, test, inspect and subsequently uh, deliver. Are there any configuration instructions from the release notes that you need to follow? Yes or no? If yes, you need to apply those, uh, make additional changes to the repository, deliver those changes. And then the third question is, are there any administrative changes that you need to undertake depending on the gap you're closing? How many versions are, are you jumping over with uh, 22.5? Uh, depending on the number of those versions, there could be a number of administrative things uh, you have to implement. Uh, for example, including, uh, look at the tiny uh, the box explaining the asterisk, uh, including recreating the debug server because that was required when uh, we had that log4j vulnerability, or uh, reloading the runtime events cache, which is uh, m seems to be mandatory in 22.5 plus for TR environments uh, or other things you might need to do. And then of course you do these uh, administrative changes before you declare your update of your development or DR environment complete. Now, once it's complete, if you can start with uh, updating your test production or RR environments to 22.5 or any any later release probably, but that's in the future. So again, you start with a mandatory backup of your environment, make sure uh, your environment and database is fully and quickly restorable before you run the MDE. Again, that's the game with uh, MDE applies the binaries and if not skipped, if not done manually, it automatically runs the post install database update, which you have to run once per environment. And then do you have any repository changes to be migrated? That is, for example, you applied uh, the repository upgrade to get the dashboards, then you have to migrate these repository changes and the C changes introduced by, for example, the repository upgrade or any configuration changes. You have to use the migration application to migrate these changes, then implement any administrative changes that you might have on your checklist for the test or production environment. For example, in test environments, uh, uh, update Jenkins or uh, DISA, etc. Just a few examples. And once you have finished these steps for administrative changes, 
or you have none, then your environment is updated to 22.5. And what if you are not on IP17 and higher, so you cannot just apply the update, then you have to upgrade. Uh, so there might be a few projects out there after five years of IP17, uh, might be a few projects out there being on any old Siebel version 7.5, 7.7. If you're on one of these, you have to do a official two-step upgrade. So you have to upgrade to 8.1.1 first and then to the latest 22.5. Uh, keep in mind that no upgrade whatsoever ever uses a 17.0 installation. Uh, it always goes directly to the latest uh, monthly update uh, installation. So you install 22.5 and you install the ancestor repositories and you install the master repository and then you go about and do the upgrade. But an upgrade process is described in uh, our Siebel upgrade class. We find the link in the description. And it's a very lengthy process in months of uh, person months that is or even person years until you declare the upgrade complete and uh, opposed to that once you are on a continuous update release such as 18 dot something until 22 dot something uh, you can just apply or basically on 17.0 and higher you can just apply an update and that effort is well calculated in person days and not person months or years so that information of course applies and your mileage might vary a lot depending on what version of Siebel you're coming on coming from and how do you get to the latest 22.x and at the time of recording this video 22.5 is the latest, hottest Siebel release out there, so make sure you get it. So thank you very much for watching. Take care and bye-bye.